Hey guys, it's me. Welcome. Welcome back to my channel. Um, let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? If you're wondering what the fuck this is, I cut myself while eating scraps of peanut butter off of a knife after I was done spreading it on my toast. So yeah, I'm sorry if all you can see throughout this entire video. Now that we've got that out of the way, I'm gonna be telling you all about the books that I read in January because there are quite a few of them. Some of them were amazing, some of them were okay, and some of them were downright disappointments. And like, now I know what it's like to be my parent. So the first book that I read in January, I actually don't have with me. It is a book that I really enjoyed, so I did lend it out to my mum. The book is Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen. The book follows the story of a typical American family, Russ Hindlebrand, who is a pastor at a suburban liberal church, his wife Marion, and his three children, well, four children. Becky is the daughter, she is the archetypical popular girl, so like, I have to laugh at the fact that Franson named her Becky because that is just, I mean, you can't get more cliche if you try it. The youngest son, who we get the point of view of, is called Perry, though he himself does have a younger brother that he takes care of, and the older brother is away at university but does make certain appearances and he's called Clem and this was one of the most immersive books that I have ever read I mean I could not stop reading and I did start reading this uh, around Christmas period which was extremely inconvenient because you know getting away at Christmas to read a book is kind of you know not polite kind of frowned upon so it was a little bit annoying but I did get to finish it in January and I really really enjoyed it now the reason that I say that it's confusing is because I don't know how I feel about it. I know that I enjoyed the experience. I know that it brought a lot of nuance in terms of ethics and where I position myself on certain values and topics of discussion. But at the same time, uh, some stuff about it really did rub me the wrong way. And I can't really say anything because of spoilers. So the first time that I rated it, I rated it three stars and then I went back and rated it five stars. But now I do think that it's a bit too generous. I don't know. I, I think it's probably realistically a 3.5 to 4.5, but it is a very difficult book to rate because the experience that I had reading it was absolutely wonderful. But at the same time, there are some things that objectively I'm kind of like, eh, I'm not sure I like that. But I think that one of the things that really made me enjoy this book so much is that I tend to be so fascinated by America in general and American society. And having this book that is set in a suburban area, white picket fence kind of thing of this typical American family was so fascinating for me to read. It's just like this other world. So yeah, overall, I really did enjoy this experience. Delving into the character's psyche, but uh, it was so good. I mean, Franzen really knows how to develop his characters. You know, it flowed, we traveled through time in terms of memory and what goes on in the actual story. It was really, really well made and well polished. So the next books that I read, I actually don't have one of them because I lent it out to my dad and he's really enjoying it um, from what he's told me. I spaced them out throughout the month, but I am gonna tell you about all three of them in one go for reasons that will make sense in literally a second. So um, I read Mythos Hero and Troy by Stephen Fry. I cannot explain to you how much I love these books. So Mythos, Heroes and Troy are just retellings of Greek mythology by who is objectively the most eloquent and funny man on the entire planet. I was going to pace myself with these, but I did finish Troy like a week ago and I it was a binge read. So Mythos uh, retells the stories of the gods and how they came to be and the myths and legends that ensue shortly after. Heroes discusses, as the name might hint at, uh, the heroes, though don't worry if you didn't get it. It does discuss the heroes like Jason, Perseus, Theseus, and also some of the more obscure ones that we might not necessarily know about, like Bellerophon and Atalanta. And Troy, again, shockingly, tells the story of the Trojan War. And having recently read the Iliad, I didn't know whether I wanted to put myself through Troy, but I did because I just really enjoy Fry's writing. And I'm so glad I did because it adds so much additional context that I didn't 
necessarily have access to. I mean, Stephen Fry is obviously a genius, right? But he's managed to kind of compile sources that aren't easily accessible, aren't easy to place within a certain time frame, and he's kind of managed to shove them all into a chronological order and make a wildly funny and entertaining and also informative book out of it. If you are looking to get a bit more into Greek mythology, I would absolutely recommend these. Stephen Fry is a genius, and if you have read any other Fry books, let me know if they're any good. Like, should I read them? Because I've only read these three books by him, and I love his writing, and I listen to like a lot of his interviews and speeches and debates and all that stuff, and I really love him. So if you guys have read his books, please let me know if they're any good. Now, the next book, okay, I didn't like it. In fact, it was a tedious experience, and I ended up DNFing it, and I'm so sorry if I'm about to hurt your feelings, because I'm definitely in the minority here, um, but it's Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. I read this because of the hype, and it looks like every time I read a book because of the hype it's gotten, I end up getting disappointed. And you know what? I've always kind of struggled with Anthony Doerr. All the Light We Cannot See was objectively good, it just didn't really do it for me, so I didn't hate it. This I hated. I never DNF books because I don't like them. When I DNF books, it's usually because I am not in the right mood, and I want to find the right time to read it so I can properly enjoy it at a later date. But this one was just a miserable experience. I was so bored. I had to keep rereading passages to kind of remember what was going on because I kept just drifting off and thinking of something else because I was so uninterested. At around page 400, I was just like, you know what? I've wasted enough time. I was kind of at the point where I was like, I've come this far, do I really want to give up now? I, but I did, and I, I'm so fucking glad I did. I could not tell you what this book is about. We jump across several different points of view at different times with different storylines that are all very, very loosely connected, and that would be fine. But the thing is that each chapter is like a couple of pages long, which when you're shifting points of view every chapter, like you just about have time to get into a story, and then you're yanked out of it to be put like several thousands of years into the future like bro also Anthony Doa I've noticed always uses the innocent little children character archetype and I just find them very boring to read about these characters are just there and they're good and they're flat and one dimensional or maybe they have a huge development towards the end and I missed it because I didn't finish this book. But you know what, I, I don't care. I'm fine living my life not knowing. I didn't like this book. And now every time I see someone rave about this book, I'm like, what did you see in this that I didn't? There is nothing that I like about it. The only reason I gave it two stars instead of one star is one, because of peer pressure. Like I don't, I'm not trying to get too many people to notice me, okay? Start debating me about why this book is actually good. And also because I do admit that Anthony Doe has very nice prose. Unfortunately, wasn't good enough to keep me hooked. So yeah, Cloud Cuckoo Land was a huge disappointment. Next book I read, I don't have because I lent it out to a friend and it's The Room by Hubert Selby Jr. I was in the mood for some dark shit, so I picked that up. I overall really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the narrative. For those of you who don't know, it is about a man who has been sent to jail and he claims that he is innocent. Yet at the same time, he describes in very graphic detail the torture that he would inflict on the people who put him in jail in the first place. Um, if he ever got out, he fantasizes about how he would get out. He also describes in very great detail the crime that he has been accused of committing but didn't do. And it's very dark and twisted and the narrative is super interesting. That's what I love the most about this book. It kind of does shift from first to third person and it's almost like a different person is talking. Whereas this guy almost has two personality and they kind of keep intersecting and cutting each other off and it's really interesting I really recommend it just for the narrative now I gave this book three out of five, five stars because I thought that it was genuinely good but after a while the graphic torture scenes just I mean there, it was too much for me at least and not too much in a way like oh my god I like I can't read this anymore this is like getting too much for me to handle no it was just more like I've had so much graphic shit thrown at me that right now I'm immune and kind of bored as to what's going on 
I just, I stopped caring and it stopped having an effect on me. I think that if there was like maybe a little bit less torture, it would have been more interesting in a way. And it would have been definitely more effective for me as a reader. But after a while, yeah, there was just way too much. Like, Give It Selby Junior really like milked it for what it was worth. And after a certain point, it, it stopped having an effect on the reader. It was no longer showing the darker facets of humanity. It was just shock value. That turned out not even to be shock value because we'd read it all before. If you do want to read it, go for it. But again, it is very graphic. Descriptions of violence can be traumatizing, so tread with caution. So the next book I read is The Ancient Guide to Modern Life by Natalie Haynes. I love Natalie Haynes. If you've read her fiction, let me know if it's good. I've only read her nonfiction so far and I've listened to her podcast, but she's really, really funny and provides very good information when it comes to the ancient worlds. This title is pretty self-explanatory. It kind of goes through a lot of aspects of the ancient worlds that have either contributed to the way we function today as a collective because it is just so ingrained in human nature at this point. And she also studies some political systems, for instance, that almost seem to be more interesting and efficient than what we have today. And it's honestly very, very good. She talks about how women were treated. She talks about philosophy, politics. It was just so insightful and witty and easy to read. I think that's why I love Natalie Haynes so much is because of how accessible she is. I mean, I think we can all agree that the studies of the ancient world tend to be a little bit elitist. So having this resource where you are free to access information of someone who has spent years studying the topic and then writes it in a way that is fun and entertaining and also informative and thought provoking. Wonderful, I absolutely loved it. And I would like to read it again because I feel like it's the kind of book where if you just read it once kind of casually, you miss a lot of things. And you know, if you just have a surface level interest, that's fine, but as as you can see, my interest in the ancient world is pretty persistent. So I will want to reread this more in depth and kind of take notes and do some more reading and check out the resources. But if like me, you have an, a new interest in the ancient world, I would absolutely recommend Natalie Haynes. I don't know about her fiction. I have not read her fiction. I tend to be quite wary of mythological retellings or retellings in general, because the ones I've read were generally quite shit. So we'll see. And finally, the last book that I read in January was the highly anticipated To Paradise by Hanya Vihara. This book was really good. I rated it three stars, but I still really enjoyed it and I'll explain why in a minute. Now, this book, a lot of people have had very mixed reviews about. We follow three storylines. I, I feel like there's like such a trend going about having overarching storylines over a long period of time that are just very loosely connected, if connected at all. I found that it was done much better here to be honest, but again, that's just my point of view and also I'm biased because I love Hane and Gihara. All of the characters in every storyline have the same names, which stops being confusing after a while in terms of rating, but it's so confusing to me as to why she did that. But you know, it didn't really affect my experience at all. In the first story, we follow a man named David who lives on a, in a big house in Washington Square with, with his grandfather and who is a bit, you know, of a spoiled little rich boy, but who also doesn't have much social experience um, until the day he meets a music teacher who he falls desperately in love with. But at the same time, he's supposed to go into arranged marriage. So that complicates things. In, in book two, we follow a man named David, who lives in America in the middle of an AIDS epidemic. And he lives with his much, much older boyfriend slash sugar daddy, but I get more of an impression that it's a boyfriend dynamic, given the fact that, you know, he really seems to love him. And we find out about his background and his Hawaiian family and his ancestry, which is all very interesting. And there's the last book, which is the longest, and it is set in a dystopian America where we just lived through pandemic over pandemic, and it's just, it's not a pleasant place to be, clearly. And our main character is a woman. Now, okay, this book is not something I would necessarily reach for had it not been by the queen herself. And to be very honest, I found the first story kind of boring. I found the second story a little bit boring as well. And I found the third story absolutely tedious. But I still 
finished it and tabbed it and loved it. Why is that? To me, Yana Gihara's prose and her commentary on human emotions and just the way she writes and describes things and fleshes out her characters was enough for me to want to keep reading for 600 pages. If that does not tell you how good she is, I don't know what will. I think that that can attest to how absolutely brilliant she is. And someone referred to her as an emotional genius. I completely agree. This posed a lot of interesting questions about human emotions that I was delighted to answer and scribble in the margins and just reflect upon. Now I am going to say a lot of the work that she does uh, deciphering human emotions. When I was reading it, it was kind of emotional self-harm because it was making me reflect a lot on uh, my perception of myself and who I am. And after a while, I did have to stop reading, especially for the first book, because my God, emotionally it was so draining. It was so, so draining. I rated it a three stars and all three stars are for her writing and her commentary. And I didn't really enjoy the stories that much. Okay, so this would not be one of my videos if I didn't lose footage so i lost my outro thankfully that's it so i'm sorry okay this is editing me here i am not about to put some makeup on for this segment i just wanted to say thank you so much for watching if you made it this far thank you if you're new you can subscribe I, I promise that this doesn't happen every time i'm doing rough at the minute okay i'm tired i woke up at 1 p.m yesterday and getting up today at like 9 a.m was a struggle i'm getting back on my feet slowly but it, it's hard okay bear with me please without it over myself any further. I will see you guys soon, hopefully in a better state. Goodbye.